By the end of this video, I hope to show you our current electronics board and what that looks like and kind of some of the components that I'm working on today that go into our current iteration that will soon be the iteration that's our manufacturing prototype. Sure many of you know we are building an EV charger for people who park on the street and need to charge there and I've gone through a whole bunch of iterations in the past on our Mark 1, Mark 2, Mark 3, and Mark 4 prototypes and today we're doing something in more of the present time. All of those prototypes are great, they got us to today and now I want to start sharing with you our current development and where we're going over the next few months. So this is our electronics or EDSE board. This is the E8, it means it's our eighth version of this. When this guy powers up, it runs some safety checks. The biggest one here is probably the GFCI pretest or trip test, basically trips the GFCI to make sure it's working properly, and then it starts up everything else. When you plug a vehicle in, it will begin communicating with this board using some simple voltage drops, and that tells the board that a vehicle is connected. Once a vehicle is connected, this guy starts generating a one kilohertz square wave. It runs down the line to the vehicle. The vehicle reads this and it looks at the width of the square wave to determine how many amps it can safely pull off this. So we actually have a little dip switch on this board that sets the duty cycle of that square wave so that it can tell the vehicle the appropriate current for the circuit that we install this on. Once the vehicle says, okay, I'm going to pull some current, it sends another voltage drop and this guy says, okay, it's ready to receive the current. It closes the main relay on this board and distributes the power to the vehicle. As it's running, it's continuing safety checks. It runs some other tests too to make sure that everything is safe um, according to what is designated as standard for these guys. So there's quite a bit of regulations and UL standards and things that go into these boards and that makes it pretty standardized. It makes it relatively easy to know what you're building here, um, but at the same time you have to adhere to all of those. So anyhow, why am I showing you this board. So you can see this board here today is largely populated with all of our low voltage and a few high voltage components here. There's a big section here in the center that's open. Uh, if you look at the back, I also have quite a few low voltage components for the GFCI circuit or the pilot circuit or our AC sensing circuit. What remains to be populated is really the high power distribution through the relay. And this is a really critical portion of the board because you're passing all 32 amps potentially of current through that part of the board. And there's a few ways to deal with that high current. So to illustrate some of this, uh, I'll just bring up this version five board. Essentially, when you're looking at running high power through copper, which is what we're doing here, you have to worry about heat. And there's a process called joule heating that essentially as you push electrons through copper, the resistance in the wire uh, generates losses in the electricity or in the current and that essentially gets converted to heat. There's a couple ways to reduce resistance. One is to increase the electrical conductivity of the material. Unfortunately, copper, which is what we use here, is just about the best we have for the cost, and so that's what we go with. The second way to decrease resistance is increase the size of the copper that the electricity is flowing through, the cross-sectional area. It, think of it as like a wire. It would be a small wire versus a big wire. In this case, we're not running it through wires per se, some of the places, we're actually running it through a flat plane on the board. And so the thickness of that plane matters. This is a little bit thicker than standard copper that you get on a board. Uh, and then we also double it up. So we actually have a trace on the back and on the front, and they're very wide. So that's how we're dealing with passing the power through this board. You can see we do pop it out of the board through these two coils here. The first one's our GFCI coil. The second one is our current coil. That's what's measuring how much power is going into the vehicle. And then we are using that to meter the power out to uh, the user and, and bill for how much power has been used. And then this big box here is the relay. So I've been using these boards for a little while. It works okay-ish, it's not great. It does get a little warmer in the box than I like. It's not problematic, but it could be if you got high enough ambient conditions. So I've changed things around on this board here. This is actually E8, so a few generations forward. Um, essentially, we have a few bus bars that attach right at the terminal connector, and then they go through the coils and they end right at the relay, which is right next to the second terminal connector. 
So we still have onboard traces similar to the previous, but over the long traces, we're running it through these 1.5 millimeter thick copper bus bars. Those are what I need to build today. So follow along. I'm going to be making these large copper bus bars that will get inserted into this board. They'll run through the coils. I'm going to do that on my CNC router, cut them out. And uh, first I need to jump in CAD and get that all set up. So this is the long bus bar. It essentially starts over here at the terminal connector, runs through the coils around and down to the relay. And this guy is made from 1.5 millimeter copper just bent in two places. So I need to flatten this guy out, set a machine path around it for my CNC router, and then route it. So you can see it's going around here. We're going to do something like four or five passes just to make it a little bit easier on the bit. And this is what we're starting with. It's a six by six inch piece of copper. Should work just fine. So the trial run's looking good. We should be good to get cutting on this guy. Gonna be too bad to clean up. Give it a little snip with the tin snips and then we'll hit it with the file. Now that we have the bus bars made, we need to bend these guys so that they fit the shape on the board. So I'm gonna use my little bending break that I developed a little while back for another thing, but it'll work well for this. First we'll measure to the inside of the bend. And there you can see we have both bus bars sized correctly, fitting their holes. They actually stay in there pretty nicely without the solder. That'll help when we go to solder it in, make it easy so they don't fall out. So I ran into an issue where the bus bars were designed to fit through these coils, the current coil and the GFCI coil, but I cannot get them into the coils, even though once they're in there, they're fine. And this is something that you don't generally think about when you're designing it. Um, at least drawing it up on the screen. It's like, oh, it'll work great. And then you don't think about the insulation. So it was an oversight on my part. What I had to do was basically spiralize these bus bars so that I can stick them in through the coil. And then I should be able to bend that back straight and solder it on. Now, this will obviously be changed in future versions, but I had to do that just with what I got. I want to keep moving forward, figure out if this bus bar thing is even valid, if it works. Um, and then I will adjust that in the future so that we don't have this conundrum here. This is why I like prototyping stuff in house like this because it goes so much quicker and it allows me to find issues before I spend the time and the money getting it done elsewhere. It can really save a lot of time. Definitely not ideal and my lineman's pliers are <clears throat> marring it up a bit. Ah, my beautiful bus bars are ruined. First thing I do is tack the coils on. And then we'll come in on the bus bars. These will take a little bit of heat. A nice flow. Not perfect, but uh, liking where we're going. Now we just gotta get the relay on here and the connectors. So I have the E8 all together and I have it all hooked up to the computer to upload the firmware with this little dongle here. Let's get this thing uploaded and see if it can charge the car. So we're going to connect the input wires in here and then we will connect up my test cable and get the car going. Whenever you're installing a charger like this, you should always torque the electrical connections. So these guys are torqued to 19 inch pounds, which isn't a lot, but that's what these screw connectors call for. Wiggle them around a little bit to make sure they don't loosen up and then retorque. So I tested the E8 charger here for a half hour 
and shot it with my IR camera and also looked at the internal air temperatures inside the charger. And it had a temperature rise in there of somewhere around 16, 17 degrees Celsius on the air temp. And you can see that it maintained relatively cool temperatures on the IR camera. Now I compared the E8 against the E7, which was the previous version without the bus bars. And it got up to a 30 degrees temperature rise inside in the air temperature. And you can see the IR temperature was showing quite a bit higher as well. So what that's telling me is that this bus bar solution runs much cooler than the other previous just on the board solution. And that's great because that means everything is staying much cooler inside the case. Everything should last longer. And if this guy is outside because this is a numerated enclosure and it gets baked by the sun, this can handle much higher ambient temperatures. So that's what we want. We want this charger to last a really long time for you all. And so we're working really hard to make sure that all the components are rated at decent temperatures. Um, now, just a note on that, we are measuring temperature at four places currently inside this guy. So we have a ton of temperature sensors. If it does detect a temperature above a limit point, it'll derate current. And if it still gets too hot, it'll just shut everything off. So we have safety features that we're building into this to protect against temperature. And yeah, so that's the E8. I'm sure there's gonna be an E9, but I'll show you that later. If you made it this far, you're probably a huge fan and you're loving what we're doing. So this next section is for you. It's just an update. I will keep continuing to put out videos like this one where we are just explaining the whole process as we ramp up to getting these things ready so we can offer them for pre-sale for you all. So this is really the direction we're going in. I'll have more details on that soon as to timeline and things that you can expect there. But in the meantime, if you do want to get involved, uh, I'm going to ask you to do a couple things. One is just subscribe, follow along. That's huge. It helps us. It really helps get the, the message out there of what we're trying to do. You know, feel free to share with family and friends or whoever you think could benefit from this. Second is if you did email me over the summer, and I know a lot of you did, I put my email in the description. I'll do that again in this video. Um, there was a ton of you I did not get back to, and I apologize for that. I really got swamped with just hundreds and hundreds of emails. So if you did want to hear, talk to me, you know, communicate, please email me again. I'm working on trying to work through a bunch of the things that got pushed out. And if there are ways that you think you could be of help to us, I want to talk about that too. So please email me again. Um, I will do my best to get back to you all. Hopefully I don't get hundreds of emails again, although that is also kind of nice. So just, just email me, I'll, I'll do my best. Finally, there's going to be a lot of things coming up for you to get involved. I mentioned the, the pre-sales. Um, we're also looking into potential investment opportunities and things like that. So if you are interested in any of that, I would recommend that you sign up on our wait list. So if you go to coolstreet.com, there is a wait list there. You can sign up um, to get an early charger but it also puts you on a list of preferred people that we reach out to when we have other opportunities come up. So if you wanna get the best, most up-to-date information, make sure you sign up there. Otherwise, if you email me, I will still add you to that list, but that's a kind of way of signing you to that list without actually emailing me and having to deal with talking to me. There's gonna be some other things coming up too. We are just getting started here, so keep following along, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.